Today it is time to enter the Upside Down for the last time for another two years. <laughs> I'm entering the upside down. Don't talk. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going from Vecna's lair into the upside down. So, hold on. Oh, whoa! Time to get spooky! I did want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Nuna. Nuna offers AI-powered cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBT. It's a type of therapy that I've been using for the last few years now, and it is so beneficial for not only me, but so many others. The app offers exercises, journaling, and also Nuna's personalized chat. Nuna helps you get into the habit of practicing self-care and mindfulness, which can be so hard nowadays, especially to do it on your own. It's built by a team of psychologists and uses clinically validated techniques, which are all used by therapists all over the world. With Nuna, you can track your mood and your triggers and also work on easing anxiety and stress. I really like Nuna because I love journaling, but I don't carry around my journal everywhere that I go. So it's really nice that I can just open up the app if I have a free moment when I'm out of the house and I just have a prompt waiting for me and I can journal on the go. I also love the idea of mood tracking. It's been something that I've been wanting to do for so many years now because I hear how beneficial it is for people, but I just haven't found a method that I like until I found Nuna. Taking care of my mental health is so important to me and I like to talk about it on this channel quite a lot. And Nuna has helped me so much with my own mental health journey and so I hope that it can help some of you guys. Plus I love that checking in on myself daily is associated with a little little pack cut. It's very cute. <laughs> if you wanna try Nuna for yourself, make sure to click the link in my description to get 25% off. Thank you, Nuna. Hi, okay, we're doing part three today of Stranger Things volume two. Who the fuck cares? It's season four, volume two, but this is part three of the video. We're reviewing episodes eight and it doesn't matter. We're gonna do commentary on it. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna review some of my favorite scenes. We're gonna expose some theories. We're gonna talk shit about the show. And most importantly, we're gonna talk a lot of shit about Mike Wheeler. Thank you so much for all the support on the last two videos. It makes my little heart happy. And every night I thank God for all of you and then I piss the bed. Let's begin! No time to waste. Aw, see here, she looks like a real person. I was talking shit about the CGI of Baby L, and everyone's like, Nicole, Baby L is not CGI, that's a real life person. Her face is CGI'd, the real actress does not look like that, and although she herself did a great job, CGI team, if you guys need a new employee on the team, don't call me because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. But here I think she looks very realistic. What have you done? This man should have been dead a long time ago. There is no way that his geriatric ass has lived through being pushed by a demogorgon, getting beat up by one. Why didn't one kill him too? That's what I want to know is like, why didn't one choose to kill Papa? Because he could have killed him like the rest of them. Look at him here. They got the beauty filter on him. He looks so young there. Oh! Whatever you guys are doing up there, hurry up! Steve says you need to hurry! Yeah, no shit! I just want to put in a freeze frame of him screaming. Yes. I mean, what are you even looking for? Madonna, Blondie, Bowie, Beatles, music! We need music! This is music! That's what I do every single time that I show my, my playlist videos, which I should do one again. Look at him, he looks blurred. Oh, I purposely made this scene sped up because the wet squelching of his little legs walking um, was a lot funnier when you speed it up. So everyone, please enjoy. <laughs> How far is Nina from Vegas? Well, once we save her, Elle, we should stop on the way back. Elle could make us like super rich and we'd never have to work. Shut the fuck up, Will. Once again, we're back to exploiting Eleven. This is why I think all the men on the show, except Steve Harrington, this is why I think all the men on this show are bad. Maybe not Hopper either. And maybe Dr. Owens. But most of them are bad because all of them just want to exploit Elle. And Will's like, we'll just get so rich and famous. We'll just drive back to Vegas. And that's what you're worried about? 
Eleven's a little busy, Will. But, but what if I, after all this is over, she, she doesn't need me anymore? Because she doesn't. I mean, she's special. She was born special. Maybe I was one of the first people to realize that. Why is he like this? Like, who says that about their girlfriend and their significant other? Like, I understand that she has, like, powers, obviously. But if my boyfriend had said I was one of the first people to realize that Nicole was special, gone. He's out of there. Single. Ew, I don't, I just don't like the way that everyone speaks about her. Like, she's just this, like, little object and tool and one day she's gonna realize that i'm just some random nerd that that got lucky that superman landed on his doorstep and you know what and she'll be right i'm not gonna lie knowing how good of an artist well as i was expecting more did you paint this it, yeah yeah i mean i mean i mean Ella liar asked me to she commissioned it basically i mean she told me what to draw all the people in the show just lied to each other no one knows how to tell the truth Elle lies to Mike because she's nervous about him thinking that she's lame. Mike's just full of shit and won't like be like, I love you. Will lies about making a painting. Joyce and what's his face, Murray, about going to Alaska and why they're going. Everyone is just in these big circles and webs of lies and they could all just be honest to each other. And I guarantee you that the show would probably be wrapped up in like two episodes versus nine. So it's just she's so different from other people and when you're when you're different sometimes okay this scene does make me want to cry you feel like a mistake this is the one time i won't give any will slander you make her feel like she's not a mistake at all like she's better for being different but i have a hard time believing that mike makes him feel like it's okay to be different because mike is the one who has said mean things to him in the past like mike is the one who was like it's not my fault you don't like girls it's not my fault you don't like girls so i feel like will deserves a shit ton better. What you displayed that day was beyond anything I'd ever imagined. A potential I'd only dreamed of. So whenever they do like close-ups of the eyes, I always check to see if the actor has eye boogies because I would. But also you can just see his makeup very clearly on this one, on this clip of the close-up of his eye. They should use more moisturizer on him. Look at hers. No eye boogies. She's very moisturized. I always thought that Henry was out there hiding in the darkness. That's a hymen right there. I didn't know for <laughs> sure. Henry is chiseling away at the barrier that exists between our two worlds. Chiseling. Chiseling? Meanwhile, he gave this whole speech. Months, months days, weeks, weeks work, work, sleep, sleep reproduce, reproduce, and die. die. And yet she's over here like, what does chiseling mean? But I want to know what, what was fucking Dr. Brenner's plan if he did find Henry in the darkness like what was his plan what, what was he gonna do bring him to the regular world again because that wouldn't have gone well killed him I don't know Duff daddies I like to talk creature with a gaping mouth and this creature wasn't alone there were so many monsters I want to see the monster gaping mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would like to see him. <laughs> four kills, four gates, end of the world. I feel like that's a bit of a jump. Like, <laughs> they don't know that much about Henry and Vecna and his goals yet, but that's a huge jump, Lucas. Four deaths, four gates, end of the world. Like, all right, let's slow down a little bit. Let's pace ourselves. All <laughs> right, maybe just what? those four. Yeah. Maybe just those four die. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, maybe everything will be okay yeah. at the end of the four. I, nope. No, 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 let's think this through, okay? We're here to think through. We barely made it out of there in one piece. Yeah, because we weren't prepared. But this time, we will be. We'll get weapons. The NRA in 2022 is actually funded by Nancy Wheeler. Um, she's the reason why we don't have gun control in America. We don't even know who he's going to attack. Yeah, we do. I can still feel him. I'm still marked. What's the thing that uh, Jacob did to, to <coughs> Renesme? Imprinted. Oh my god, Vecna's imprinted, Max. Oh, so sexy. That's actually really fucking disgusting. I didn't know what imprinting meant. Now that I know what imprinting means, Steve, I would love to be imprinted by you. <laughs> okay, sorry, let's move on. <laughs> I have a boyfriend. <laughs> Glass of water and hot steam bath. 
and five feet stack of American dollars. None of them have had a bath in a long time. All these people are filthy and disgusting. I'm like looking at Eddie's hands when he's like touching his face. I'm like, oh my God, dirty. Everyone just go to the sink. Let's all wash our hands. Let's all clean up, take a quick shower. At least before you're gonna like fight for the world or whatever, just let's get clean. That might just be me having problems with cleanliness. They probably all smell like shit. All I want for all the stranger things people is to just have nice hot bath and maybe glass of water. Why is Steve still sweaty? I'm like looking at his arm and he's like dripping in sweat. Don't you be boy. No, no, no. They're about to show Steve's foot. I don't know what it is about me. I do know what it is about me. I have issues with feet. I, I think the part of your brain where like sexuality is, is tied very closely to where feet are. Yeah, that's why people have foot fetishes and sometimes like the paths can like cross. I think I have like the opposite of that. Like when I see like a guy that I'm interested in foot. Like to me, the equivalent of like seeing someone that I'm interested in feet is like the equivalent if I saw them like taking a shit on my like kitchen floor like that's how fucking like disgusted i get i could have gone my whole life without seeing steve harrington's feet like now i like view that man differently i can't listen to joe curie's music anymore i probably won't watch season five now because this is not our choice we agreed this was not going to be a prison we'll show her what this is what we can offer and then it is her choice oh my god whether she wants to stay or go right dr owens is actually a pro-choice king he would have voted for roe thank you dr owens thank you for trying to protect our rights i always had this dream that i'd have this like this really this really big family i'm talking like a full brood of harrington's like five six kids six yeah, Nancy the whole nuggets, time she's just saying she's like i cannot Rockies, push six kids out of me she's like are you fucking kidding me that sounds nice. Yeah. I'm getting the ick from Steve for several reasons, and I love this man more than anything. Number one, the fact that I know what his feet look like now, and number two, the fact that he wants that many kids because the thought of that many children terrify me. He's a fictional character who I will never be with. <laughs> you got a memory in mind? It was a time when I was the happiest. Oh. Was I there? <laughs> hey, um. Was <laughs> I in your memory? <laughs> Are you going to think about me when you, you know, get taken by Beck now? You said you had a plane. A plane! No, no, no. I, I, I feel bad I just haven't talked much about the adults. But honestly, like, it being taken place in, like, snowy Russia, mostly in a prison, it's very depressing to, like, talk about or have much to say about it. I'm just happy that they go home soon. That's all I care about. Oh, but look at them walking into the gun shop. They're, like, filthy. They're, like, fucking disgusting, except Erica. They could have taken a quick shower, I feel like, at, uh, at Max's house. I don't feel like they should have had to gone out dirty. I clearly have my priorities very straight. Ew! Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need to stop actually being mean. Like, this is getting to be too much. They made Steve fucking Harrington walk barefoot at this at this gun place. The whole entire video is just now revolving around Steve Harrington's feet, and that's all it is. That's all the commentary. You gonna mace me with that? If it keeps you in line, yeah. Would you kiss me at the ammo section of the gun store? That hat is barely on her head. That hat is about to fall the fuck off her head. One twenty ninety nine, but I'll throw on twenty rounds of buckshot for you. Would you let go? Let go. I wish she would have like filled the gun with uh with bullets right then and there and killed him, so that we could stop talking about Jason because he just ruins the entire season. And when I decide that you are ready, we will return to Hawkins together, Papa and daughter. See, and this is why Dr. Brenner would not be pro-choice. All he's doing is making decisions for the women in his life. And now you are angry with yourself and you're taking your anger out on me and you're risking everything. <gasps> no, you. No, you. Let's give Eleven some more credit. That was the shittiest comeback of all time. No, 
No, you. I feel like she said that multiple times in these two episodes. I feel like they did kind of dumb her down because she's able to speak full sentences and say very powerful things one moment and then another moment. She just has these broken sentences where it doesn't make much sense. I'm going to open that door and I'm going to leave. Like right now. With Dr. Owens. Eleven, you're regressing. Look at me, Eleven. You're regressing. Never change. Dustin Henderson. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I watched this, I did think that they were gonna kiss. Also, the one huge giveaway that Eddie is wearing a wig. People who have long hair, as a person who has longer hair, if there's hair in, let's put hair in my lip gloss. If there's hair in my lip gloss, what I'm gonna do is go like this. But the thing that people with wigs do, especially men, I've noticed, this is how they act. That's how they get hair out of their face. And I've noticed Joseph Quinn do that with Eddie the entire show. Whenever he gets hair in his face, he just goes. And that's how, that's how little kids get hair out of their face. They go like this. I have seen like little girls. I'm not talking about failed romance. I just, I have this terrible gnawing feeling that it might not work out for us this time. This is how I knew that there wasn't going to be a happy ending this season. Like, we were not going to be satisfied at that very moment. They were, like, foreshadowing that there is not going to work out in the end. <laughs> this is the one time I was really happy and in support of someone getting shot. I, got it. I was like, yeah, shoot Dr. Brenner. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Eleven. Ew, ew, you. they're so fucking gross, and I love her face. I love it when she goes... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when she goes... This is the most badass that Eleven has ever been. Let's go, Eleven. Let's go. She's a role model for women everywhere. I love it when she kills grown men. It's me. I'm here. Granted, I know she said, it's you. But instead of Mike being like, it's you. You're really here. I missed you. Blah, 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 blah. He's like, it's me. I'm here. Yay. I'm so happy his geriatric ass is finally dead. give the woman her autonomy. They are going to die. Who's gonna die? Elle, who's gonna die? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Everything that he ever says, I just see it as Noah Schnapp now. Out of all the friends, I don't think she's ever had a conversation with Steve. I don't think she's ever had a conversation with Jonathan. Lucas, have we ever seen her speak to Lucas? Other than like throwing him against like a car in the graveyard. I've never seen her speak to Dustin. She hasn't talked to like all of the group and she's like, these are my friends. She's like, I love these people, which is very cute. Those noises you hear that <laughs> it's very good sign. My woman make noise when I please. You don't know what that is like, I understand. But for those like me who knows what and where to touch, much nice. I can't wait for my mom to be able to see that scene. She started Stranger Things and she's gonna, she yeah, she's gonna really like his character. <laughs> my woman make much noise. <laughs> All up in your guy's ear like. <laughs> when I saw this scene, I was like, they're gonna fuck in a church and I can't wait for it. <laughs> oh, he's so sexy naked in the church. Yeah! They're gonna fuck at a church! Oh, I've been waiting for the day that there would be a sex scene in a church in Stranger Things. I hope they break up with their in real life partners for each other. <laughs> I'm very happy. They had the best slow burn of all time. And I'm happy that they made it like a very, very slow burn. Because if it was like fast and right to it, then we wouldn't be as excited as we were. Hooking up in a church, it's exactly what I wanted. Why did he stand like that? Kiss. Okay, now kiss. Now kiss in the upside down. This is the most I've ever seen Elle speak. This is Max. 
when one attacks, this is like the biggest mind. monologue. Millie Bobby Brown is probably like, holy fuck, I got a monologue I that I gotta prepare mind, for. Billy's, I can go into Max's. I can piggyback. Who taught her the word piggyback? How does Eleven know the word piggyback? Who taught her that? That's not like a common word. Also, this is Elle's first time seeing seeing a blunt. She's like, what is purple palm tree delight? <laughs> Papa, what is kush? <laughs> Papa, what is kush? The entire time that like the Duffer brothers were like, oh yeah, will sexuality will be explained in season four. It's just all stares. It's just all like Will staring off at, at Mike and just him going. And we're like, oh yeah, we understand his sexuality. We got it. We got it. Well, that's the gay experience. <laughs> <laughs> Some other girl would give me a proper thumb before we met with things have been <laughs> different. He literally sounds like he's like dropping the hottest new Drake single ever. Some other girl would give me a proper thumb before we met with things have been different. Steve's got bars. Part of me, I don't know, part of me thinks that we would have made it. Steve. You remember the dream I told you about? About the Winnebago, about seeing the country with my six all nuggets. It's all true. Every last word. But I left one part out. It's the most important part. You're there. You've always been there. Okay. That is a very cute all, but also if a man who was not my boyfriend told me that he wants six little fucking nuggets as I'm about to die in the middle of the woods, I'd be like, get your ass out of here. My little birthing hips are not going to be breaking for your six little nuggets. And like also in general, a man telling me that he wants children with me, it may seem very endearing, but as a woman who's very scared of children and very scared of pregnancy and very scared of six little things growing inside of me at once because it feels like a parasite, that just does not sound appealing to me. And that's coming from me being a huge Joe Keery fan. While that's very sweet and endearing, it's not exactly the love speech that I would have liked to receive. Fuck Robin for ruining it. That's a part of my videos. There will be Robin slander. There will be slander for everyone. And there's some Steve slander in this video now too. Do I look cool? I feel like I'm, I look really cool. Are you giggling? <laughs> I know I look so good. Right? Mike. This is the first time that they look cute as a couple together since they were like literally making out at the beginning of season three. Uh, I don't know. I guess I just, I wanted to, to say that. Surf shut, Romeo. There's a lot of interrupting going on in this episode. Number one, Joyce and Hopper with the red phone. Number two, Nancy and Steve with Robin. And number three, Ellen Mike with Argyle. Why can't we see characters happy? Yeah. And, and I'm always here for you, too. I know. I know you are. Come here. Oh, poor fucking Will. Will can never be happy. He just has to cry in the back of a pizza shop to his brother musty ass murky ass water i think argyle like took a dip in there first just to like test it out it just looks really gross the water it's not working what? what's not working max's plan max's plan <laughs> i knew that he drove too fast so i would imagine him crashing i wanted him out of my life i wanted him to disappear i think that's why i just stood there i didn't know if he deserved to be saved I am so happy that they actually made that be Max's emotions towards the whole Billy situation because I feel like what normally would have happened, I don't know, writers of the show being like, oh, she realized afterwards that she really did miss her brother and that she misses the time that she spent with him and she actually had some good memories with him. And like, she's telling the truth here that she is happy that he died and that her life has gotten better because he's not around and like how much suffering he had caused her and that she did wish at moments that he had died and now she's like conflicted about her feelings so i'm really happy that they like kept that with her story you know because the truth is just because you die doesn't make you suddenly a good like character person like billy was a bad person billy was racist towards lucas billy was awful to his sister and abusive billy bullied kids and almost like ran them over i think it would have been really unrealistic for max to be like i miss my big brother <laughs> i wish he was back i miss you billy i regret that you died i'm sorry where are you going don't be scared stay away from me max, max. I, 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 I said stay away 
I'm sad that Lucas didn't get the opportunity to act like that during the rest of the show, like during any other seasons, because that is the most and best acting that I've ever seen him do this entire episode. And I wish we could have seen more of like that energy. Ah, oh, this is such a cool scene. I love that they included that again. Max is like the happiest memory I've ever had was uh, kissing my boyfriend in like the sixth grade. Go on. No one's favorite memory is that ever. Unless you're in the sixth grade. Sorry, no offense to the sixth graders watching this. It'll get better. I am in a memory. A Max memory. <laughs> a Max memory. <laughs> a Max memory. Fucking Jason, Jason. Ruining this entire show. Here right now, man. Ruining everything. I'm not having another funeral. And the fact that this was not a kiss that was supposed to happen, they improv that. <laughs> this is why I feel like men should never be in charge because they're always gonna fuck up like this. Why did he cut it down? Because how is everyone supposed to get back? Now that he cut the rope off, now no one can get back in. Why did he do that? You just fucked it up for everyone. Now no one can get back into the regular side. Eddie, stop. Eddie, stop. 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 Said fuck this little piss stained mattress. Also, why is the why is the the mattress in the upside down not piss stained, but the one in the regular world is? <laughs> Since the mattress was stuck in 1983, it was a clean, brand new, pissless mattress. So he's done a lot of pissing from 1983 to 1985. Feel them. I can feel them. Dying. These girls look so beautiful getting choked by all the tentacles and everything. Like they look gorgeous as ever because they're beautiful. And poor fucking Steve has to look like that again. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of Steve slander in this video. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm sorry. I don't know what's come over me. <laughs> but like, the, you know what I mean? Like these beautiful girls are just like, oh no, I, I'm pinned up against the wall. Oh, don't mind me. And then Joe Curry is like, oh, I fuck I yeah, Lucas. be like you popular normal but it turns out I'm just him. a raging psychopath true you have five seconds to wake her up ew 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 sorry i muted this scene specifically because look how embarrassing it is with no music like you know vecna went home and cried hi i told you these really cute one-liners hi did, did I make you? <laughs> I'm real. I piggybacked from a pizza dough freezer. She would have never said this! But I'm so happy what? that she did because it's very funny. But she would have never said that. I piggybacked from a pizza dough freezer. <laughs> and she was about to explain to her too. She's fighting him. Because, you know, when, like, cats or dogs are, like, in the middle of their sleep and they start having a dream and they're, like, kicking a little bit and you're like, oh, they're having a dream about, like, chasing a bunny or something. Now I'm going to be like, oh, my God, she's fighting him. And then the scene two. <laughs> you're like, no, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> Just fist fight each other like normal fucking people do. I want you to lie. Vecna has some like voyeuristic tendencies. All Vecna fucking talks about, he's like, Eleven, I want you to watch. Eleven, you're you're gonna be in for a treat. Uh, Nancy, tell her everything you see. I want her to watch it. I want her to see. Uh, let's show Eleven. Like, what is his obsession with this? Her poor white jeans got ruined by all the blood. At what point did Vecna get the confidence to like shave his head? And he's like, I can't keep holding on to these few strands. Also, when in the process did he lose his nose? And why? All this time we've been building. Oh my god. For you. I love that scene. I think that's like one of the scariest scenes of like anything ever. 
Billy like being possessed and him going, all this time, we've been building it for you. Like the way that he's looking at Eleven when he's like saying that, like I am mesmerized. I think Billy's acting was like some of the best in the entire show. I always wondered what that meant in, in season three where Billy is possessed and he goes, all this time, we've been building it for you. And I'm so happy that it's been brought back because I always want to know. Oh. You don't have to do this. You can still stop. Look at his acrylics. Look at the ugly ass acrylics that Vecna has. Like he really needs to trim his nails. That's how I feel about Julian Casablanca sometimes. Like I see his nails and they're like really grown out and I'm like, sir, you're so hot. You need to cut those things. Come on, please. Oh. 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 Mike, don't stop. Okay, you're the heart. Okay, remember that. You're the heart. Mike is not the heart of the group. If anyone's the heart of the group, it's Will. It's always been Will. Because the group cannot function without Will. Because Will went missing for a week. And if I went missing for a week, my friends would be like, ah, oh, that's just Nicole. Will goes missing and there's a whole search party and everyone's worried about him, obviously, because he's a fucking child. But, like, the whole show revolves around Will. He's the heart. Mike doesn't do shit except make me mad. Do you hear me? I love you. I don't believe it. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't believe it. Elle doesn't need the power of a man saying I love you in order to beat Vecna's ass. And uh, I don't think that's what they were trying to do with this, but I don't like that it's in there. I don't like that they were like, let's make a man profess his love for her, even though he already did that a year ago. Um, but he like suddenly just stopped saying I love you. What the fuck is up with that? Like no one just like stops saying I love you and then goes back to it. But I don't like that uh, some people can perceive the show if like they're not looking at it deeper. They're like, oh, the power of Mike's love is what made her fight. Because in reality, it's not. I'm sorry I don't say it more. It's not because I'm scared of you. I I'm not. I I've never felt that way. Never. Yes, he has. Literally, when he's like, why did you do that? When she hit Angela with the roller skate, he's like terrified of her. But I am scared that one day you'll realize you don't need me anymore. Because she doesn't. If I said how I felt, it would somehow make that day hurt more. How? But how would that have? How would that have? I love you on your good days. I love you on your bad days. Elle doesn't have bad powers. days. I love you without your powers. I love you for exactly who you are. You're my superhero. No! And that's literally what she did not want to be called. She wrote in that letter in a sassy ass way. She goes, Dear Mike, I'm off to become a superhero from L. Like, she didn't even write love L. Like, she said the whole superhero part because she doesn't like being perceived as this, like, fucking superhero. Like, and the fact that he still calls her that, ew. You can move mountains. I believe that. I really do. But right now, you just It's just always the emphasis of okay? what she can do. Elle did not okay. really regain Elle, strength until she's thinking me? about Max and her friendship fight. with Max and how much she loves Max and the love fight. that Max gives her. It's It was Max. Fight. And it was the power of fucking friendship. Poor Max. I really didn't think that she was going to get Ginger Snap, but here she was. He doesn't have any- Ew, why do they have to show Vecna's toes too? I am so sick and tired of seeing characters' toes in this season. Joyce is so badass. At the end of the day, it's all the women's doing and why they're all so badass. The, w the world got saved because of women. You and your friends believe you have one. Watch, she's gonna say, no, you. You have. Just, I just wish she said something more profound. Just another no, you from Elle. Whatever. She saved the world, I can't be mad. The music remix that they did for this one is so good. I just didn't think that fire would actually hurt Vecna. Look at Nancy being fucking badass again with her gun. I just also didn't think that a gunshot would do anything to Vecna either. 
Oh. No, 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 you're gonna be fine. We just gotta get you to This is so sad. I will admit this is sad. He does look like he has barbecue sauce all over his face, though. He went in on some ribs. <laughs> he does. His eyes look beautiful, too. How did he get his eyes to stay stable? Like when Dustin's like dragging his head around, how do they get his eyes not to shake at all? Like how do they fixate his eyes so that they don't move? You know what I mean? Hold on, can we practice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, maybe, maybe grab my head. That was a very gentle way to hold my head. It was like a little baby. My eyes look a little crossed, don't they? Yeah, you're literally crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you die with your eyes crossed. <laughs> No, I just kept thinking about that as I was like watching these scenes over and over again. I'm like, Jesus, he does dead eyes real good. We need a doctor. Oh, this is what really got to me was was Max dying. Eddie's scene did not make me cry at all, but Max's scene dying, it still got me emotional even editing. Like now, I'm still emotional. And it Lucas, it was Lucas's reaction really. Stop, I'm gonna cry again. I never get like that for movies or shows, ever, ever, ever. And I do have something controversial to say about Eddie's death. A lot of people want him to come back. I've seen petitions made for him to be brought back. I hope you guys are signing petitions for other things too. Everyone is like, Eddie needs to come back. Eddie does not deserve to die. He needs to come back for season five. I have something controversial to say, and I may lose subscribers for saying this but I don't think Eddie should come back. I think Eddie dying was good writing and I don't see a reason for him to come back. I think his death meant something. Also, the fact that Hopper already came back like after we thought he died, I, then I, I don't think they're gonna do that with Eddie. I think it's supposed to show like, yeah, the shit that's happening is crazy. Good people are gonna die in the process. Or as Vanessa Hudgens said, she said, <laughs> People are gonna die. Yes, it's sad, but inevitable? Don't put that in there. Why? Canceled, like Vanessa she was an asshole for saying that. Okay, we'll put that part in. Okay. He, what she said in context to real people dying, asshole for okay. saying that. In the context of TV shows, people are gonna die, which is sad, but inevitable? Like, this is terrifying. And this is like what my fucking nightmares look like. And I didn't even notice the first time around watching this that Jason was literally cut in half and God am I happy he was. And this, I, this is like a huge fear of mine happening. And what do the cracks in the earth look like? Hmm. Once again, one of Elle's iconic lines. Elle, you're not going. They were so cute and little. It's true, there is more to life than stupid fucking boys like Mike. Elle decides to get an adult job when she's older. She should definitely work in the hospital. <laughs> just revive people over and over again, just making people's hearts start. Unprecedented scale. Why are people leaving just two days later? But with hundreds more filling. You know what I'm thinking about as Elle sitting in the car? She had to sit in her salty ass clothes that she probably had to wear wet when she got out of the pizza dough freezer. And now she has to sit in the car in those salty ass clothes and they're probably all crunchy and uncomfortable. The fact that they can all get dressed and put together outfits and do their hair and do their makeup and everything after literally the world like practically ending. Poor Steve, oh, poor Steve, oh, poor Steve. Oh. Where's Lucas? He's at the hospital. Was he hurt? No, no, he's, oh God, you don't know. How would they know? How would they know? She died. I, I mean, clinically, but then she came back. Doctors don't know how. They say it's a miracle. Once again, with the keeping secrets and not telling the whole truth, they should just be honest. Like, Eleven should put it out in the open, like, yeah, she lived because I restarted her heart. Not in a braggy way, but like, I think that's kind of important for the entire group to know. I don't understand why this friend group just can't be honest with one another. What do they talk about throughout the rest of the year? You think they hang out and like talk and tell the truth to each other? Cause I don't think so. I'm happy that one good thing happened yeah. in this season. Oh, um. 
my boyfriend. Well, and that is these lesbian boyfriend. lovers. Um, I just don't even deserve it. Thank, I mean, I, I mean, thank you. Early birthday. Thank you so much. Steve is such a mom. He's such a mommy. He's like, there go my kids. There go my little lesbian lover kids. I never even saw him wear that necklace once, if I'm being honest. I never even saw Eddie wear that necklace a single time. And they're really emphasizing this limp that Dustin has. He needs to go to the doctor. But he fought. He fought and died to protect this town. He didn't have to do shit and everyone did hate him and he's like, I'm gonna care regardless. You're not gonna find magic mushrooms in the forest, Argyle. What are you doing? Looks like he's gathering mushrooms. He's a little on the eccentric side. Eccentric side. I'm happy to know what Jonathan thinks of my mother and I's pastime, which is foraging mushrooms in the forest. Good to know that he thinks we're freaks. I'm glad you're here too. Otherwise, who'd have been in charge? Steve. Stop with the Steve slander. That's my job. One is dead and rotting. He's not. Ugh. I can feel him. Why hasn't he said this earlier? And he's hurt. He's hurting. Hey, kid. Aww. I'm happy she can, has one, like, actual good parent. Aww, they're so cute bald, both of them. Are you crying? Don't cry. And no one says a single word after this. None of them. They're really emphasizing Dustin's whole little broken ankle right here. He's like, I just have, have to make sure everyone remembers. Jake said that this is what all my flowers look like when he comes to my house because I accidentally leave them rotting in the water for too long. Mom, it's snowy! It's snowy! It's snowy. Dumb bitch, Holly, it's not snow! It's Vecna's dandruff. Ugh, this gave me such a gross little nasty feeling. Uh, I'm actually very sad and happy and disappointed, but like in a good way that the show ended off on such like an unsatisfying note, because I think if it were, you know, very happy and we were satisfied with the ending, then it just would not have been as interesting. I have so many theories for like next season and like what's gonna happen. Brothers, the Duff Daddies have already said that like, yeah, Will is gonna play a huge part next season. I have a bad feeling he might have to sacrifice himself because he's never gonna have a happy ending. I think Vecna might try and like live through him. I think Vecna might try living through others and like taking over them because maybe his physical being is gone. I don't know. For example, how Will said that he can still feel him. Maybe he will try to live through Will. I think he'll try and live through Max because like Henry, when he was in a coma for what was it like a week after the entire situation when he made himself so exhausted then he was like found by the doctor i think similarly that's going to happen to max it's kind of crazy how they have these like parallels where they're both in comas so i think when max does wake up i don't think it's going to be max anymore i think it's going to be vecna living through her so maybe we'll have a <laughs> will and max tag team on the whole entire friend group, which I don't even think that Max and Will have ever even spoken to each other now that I think about it. Half these people have not spoken to each other and they're like, I love my friend group. And it's like, do you guys even talk to each other? <laughs> I don't understand what the time jump is gonna work like, but I have a feeling like what if they jump back into the past? I don't know how they would do that. Music is the way that Max was able to escape Vecna's powers. I don't know how Nancy was able to like escape out of it. If Vecna just like left a hold of her because she didn't need the music but it explains so much in season one why will was able to survive in the upside down because everyone was asking like how is it possible that will survived in the upside down for so long but remember we kept hearing him saying should i say or should i go the song that jonathan showed him he kept singing it in the upside down i also saw another theory online about how when Vecna first found the Upside Down, it was all just like very barren and it just looked like mountains and it looked like a bunch of nothing. And then how did it suddenly turn into Hawkins? I saw someone make a whole theory that it's because Will was able to imagine it or draw it because clearly what Vecna and Will are drawing, it somehow comes to life or what they think of or what they dream of. And so I think Will was stuck in the Upside Down wanting to go home and so he imagined his whole memory of the Upside Down, which is why it's stuck on the day he went missing in 1983, which also explains why 
when they go to Nancy and Mike's house to search for guns, theirs is the only house there because that's the only thing that like Will could remember or care about and that is his friend's home being there. Like it didn't matter that other homes were on that street. Like I said, I don't think Eddie, if Eddie does come back, I don't think it's any type of good way. I don't think it's as Eddie. I think it's through Vecna. I still believe Vecna has fathered at least 11, maybe eight. And that's why he has the powers of both of them. And he gave those powers onto them. And perhaps maybe he's the father to all the children. That's what I think for now. I'm very excited for the next season to come out. And I don't know how I'm going to wait until 2024. But we'll probably rewatch all the seasons again. Because I have an issue where I have comfort shows. And I can only watch those. And I can't watch anything else. So thank you guys so much for all the support on my Little Stranger Things series. I had so much fun making these. And uh, shout out to Jake for helping me edit them. Because... They are tough to edit, and we don't know how to do commentary videos, but we are doing our best, so. If you guys like this video, please make sure that you leave it a like, because it helps you out so much. Also, leave a comment. Any theories that you have for season five, because I'm very curious, and I need to know, and I want to discuss. Make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty. If not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure I have your bell notifications on, so you know every single time I post, or else you are nice. If you want to follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just it's Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty. Clementine's going viral again, because my cat is more popular than I am, so. Okay, guys, time for a proper outro. Okay, bye. <coughs> <laughs>